I have to say that I'm extremely um, chuffed uh, to be thought of as a leading light. I think that's a, a first in my career. Um, and, and also great to see so many people prepared to uh, turn out uh, for a lecture on the proverbial wet Tuesday afternoon, um, which in, indeed it is out there. Um, now, I'm going to... Um, admissions Policy, Autonomy and Access is one of those titles that uh, I was kind of prompted when I was asked to do this lecture, you know, to, to provide the title. Of course, I hadn't really thought about what I might want to speak about this evening. Um, so it is a bit of a catch-all um, that covers pretty much everything that I think about and, and do in my role at UCAS. Um, but what I am going to do this evening, and I, and I, hope, um, I hope you've got a good appetite for charts and uh, graphs, because there's quite a few of those, but I'll, I'll go over them quite quickly. I assume if anybody's interested in having the slides, they'll, they'll be available afterwards. I'm going to kind of put an admissions lens um, over um, secondary education and what's been happening in secondary education over um, a number of decades. Um, and then also uh, admissions practice. Um, and try and draw some conclusions about, um, partly about government policy around um, uh, higher education, but also about um, you know, wh where this is all pointing for the future of admissions and, uh, and to a certain extent, widening participation and widening access. Um, so uh, there's a bit of history here and a bit of uh, current day stuff, but I hope you'll uh, find it interesting. Um, so to start off, I thought I'd give you my um, my most favourite and still most used um, chart of all, which um, which is really the 50-year history of UCA and UCAS. Um, and I put this up first, really just to give you some context for, for my talk this evening. Because here we are back in uh, 1962, um, where you'll probably just about be able to see on that chart... Um, uh, that there were about 50,000 applicants for about 25,000 uh, places. And, of course, right up at the other end, uh, we're talking, as, as Jane alluded to, 700,000 applicants in 2011 um, and about half a million placed. And over that period, you can see the little black triangles is the acceptance rate, how many of those applicants actually got accepted. And I think it's quite instructional to see that, you know, right through until the early 90s, um, everyone thought it was quite acceptable for only about half of the applicants for higher education to be accepted. Uh, whereas now, um, uh, at the current time, um, it's kind of hovering at around 70% acceptance rate. Um, so uh, a huge amount of change over that period. So some of the things I'm going to look at as what's driven um, that change over um, uh, the last 50 years. Um, so first, um, a bit of secondary education. Um, so I thought you'd like to see uh, this chart, which um, goes back again, uh, back to the early 60s, um, and pretty much doesn't quite go up to the, the present day for some reason, but it's um, the percentage of school leavers, um, or, or anybody, achieving five grades A to C in GCSE. Obviously, before 1989, it was uh, five O levels, or grade one uh, CSEs. And have a look around, there's probably a couple of people in the room who, who remember those all right. <laughs> Um, it's also split by boys and girls, um, very extraordinary change just at the point when GCSEs came into uh, secondary education, um, not only sp um, spurring this enormous growth, um, but also um, us starting to see this very wide divergence of performance um, between girls and, uh, and boys. Um, just a little bit of context over that period, um, it was in 1870 that the Elementary Education Act made um, any education, elementary education at least, compulsory. Um, up until, uh, in, sorry, in 1944, the compulsory school age was raised to 15. And does anybody want to guess when it went up to 16? 1973. You know, it's not really that long ago. And of course, now recently, I can't quite remember where we are on the trajectory, but um, I think it's creeping up to 17 and then 18. Uh, by 2015, is it? I'm looking for people who know what they're talking about. Um, and, um, and as I said, from 1989, GCSEs became a kind of required um, uh, examination uh, for 16-year-olds. So obviously, when we're talking about thinking about higher education um, admissions, we need to look at level three rather than level um, 
to uh, um, achievement. Um, so I've got a chart here. It, does, it only goes back to 1985 was the earliest uh, numbers I can see here. So 1985 through to 2010. Um, and you'll see that over that period, the participation in full-time level three education by 16 um, and 17 year olds has gone from about 350,000 um, back in 85 up to about 800,000. This is actually two cohorts with 16 and 17 year olds if you're wondering um, uh, why there's 800,000 people. So it's about half that in each, each cohort. <clears throat> 